hate crime has a devastating and long-lasting effect on victims. It can and does divide communities. It prevents people from living their everyday lives. The impact on the victims is horrendous. I've had all forms of personal experiences, from people spitting at me, people calling me names, people using abusive language. Recently in a club, I was with my friends and a little altercation broke out where the security had to get involved. And it led to us being followed out in the street by the same girls that were kicked out and us being assaulted in the street. How did you feel? I was traumatised by it, um, knowing that people were stopping, walking by and videoing us but not helping. It's very close to where I live and it was on my walk every day. So every time I passed that spot, I just thought about it. I have an uh, injured back from it. One of my friends had an incident where she was out in a nightclub with her, her girlfriend and they were kissing on the dance floor and a random stranger, a girl, came over and punched her in the stomach because she took offence. To think right now there are videos of us getting her out there makes me pretty uncomfortable. My daughter was five when she experienced um, hate crime for the first time. Um, it was in the lunch queue, um, or um, one of her classmates said, oh, don't sit next to me because you're brown. I have a disability, which is Down syndrome. I was in Ireland with my Paxton friends. These uh, young people they were uh, starting to uh, call me names like retard and it made me feel angry and sad. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm black, I'm an Asian, I'm male. Um, I'm also a very, uh, I'm a practicing Muslim. And, and these, if in, in a sense, are the ingredients for people that are anti-Muslim, anti-black. For me, it was like, please stop saying these to me. It, it, inside of me, it, it hurts, really hurts. Hurtful because when somebody calls your names, it's, it's not a nice feeling. It's not nice to be, uh, you know, t uh, labeled as something derogatory. Did you report it? We didn't report it, which we should have, and I dealt with it pretty badly. I allowed myself to become scared and not want to leave the house. I, mean, I wouldn't know how to go about reporting it anyway, but there's, it feels like there's no point because, you know, I wouldn't be able to identify that person again, and it's kind of, it feels small. I myself, as a black woman, have suffered from hate crime. I have been called all sorts of names. I have felt very sad, confused and hurt. Coventry City Council has developed a three-year strategy. Reporting the crime is central to the campaign. And that strategy sets out how we as a council can support communities to become resilient. We want to support uh, organisations to help their members understand hate crime can impact on lives. We want to encourage people to report hate crime so we can reduce the incidents that occur. Well, I monitor hate crime in Coventry. We are alongside other cities of similar sort of size. Um, our figures reflect similarly across the West Midlands and across the country. There are five strands of hate crime. There is race, religion, there is disability, there is homophobia and transphobia. Within those strands, race and religion are by far the largest numbers that are reported. I think people are very used to being able to report that. With hate crime, it's very much victim-led, so whatever the victim wishes, we will do our very, very best to facilitate that. You can report it to the police directly, or there are a number of other ways you can report it via True Vision, which is reportit.org.uk. Um, that's a online process where you can uh, report any hate crime. You don't have to give us your personal details if you don't want to. You can do it anonymously. We also have a West Midlands Police hate crime app and it tells you about how to report, processes of reporting and places where you can get support. One of the processes we also do is we have third-party reporting centres 
Now in Coventry, all of the libraries and all of the family hubs um, have information on how to report. So if you didn't feel comfortable contacting the police, either online, by telephone, in person, um, you can go into one of these places, get some information about hate crime, get some information about True Vision, um, and then hopefully have the confidence to report. Um, and then we'll say we will do everything positive that we can. Today, victims of hate crime have greater legal protection. The courts can apply stiff sentences, but this is dependent on whether people report it in the first place. Unless it's something physical, sort of a physical assault or something, they don't think it will be taken as seriously because it's just verbal. But hate crime is hate crime, whether it's verbal or non-verbal. There's no point in crying in your bedroom and say, oh, he did this, he did that, if you're not prepared to go and do something about it. So, where do we go from here? People need to be more aware and report the crimes. Victims need to be supported and know that there is hope. We are all equal. We are each a, a person and stop calling these names. How we can bring these young people together to challenge hate crime, to have a better understanding of each other, more awareness of different communities, different faiths, so that we can work together in unity to promote positive working relationships. We all share this city and the world and it's our responsibility to look out and respect each, each other's views, whatever they may be. There's plenty of space for us all to coexist in Coventry and in the world. And as long as we do that, Coventry and the whole world will, will, will be in peace. Report it. Report it. Together. Together we can sort it. We can sort it. Sort it. We'll sort it. Sort it. Report it. Together we can sort it. Sort it.